Terry, uh, you give us a quick call this morning. You thought it might be an idea to do an interview, but we're here to talk about uh, the recent developments in the Ethion. And um, so, just doing the interview as a fan, and I hope I don't put you on the spot too much, but I would like to ask you some questions that I feel the fans would ask. Uh, and that is, you know, why would, first one, I guess, is, you know, why would we sell our top goal scorer? Uh, at this stage of the, at this stage of the season, when we're not quite safe yet, and obviously we've got a cup game coming up. Yeah, I, I fully understand that question. It's a question that any any sensible fan would ask, and uh, I like to think that I'm a fan myself. And is it something we wanted to do? No, definitely not. Um, I think it probably. Uh, rose its head about uh, a couple of weeks ago at the end of the, uh, the, the, the EFL window when um, Dagenham sold their best striker to uh, Burton Albion. Um, now you could say, well, why would that affect us? Uh, what I would say is nobody in the football club uh, wanted any to leave. We tried everything we possibly can to keep him there. Even Shaheed had a, a separate word with him on Saturday and said, look, everyone wants you to say, you know, nobody in their right mind would want to sell uh, the leading goal scorer of the club. And he's a good character. He's a very, very strong personality in the changing room. And that in itself had a, a major effect. So. This decision is based on a football-based decision. It's nothing to do with the board. We haven't got um, Dean Shahid or any other board member saying to us, um, look, we could um, cash in on a 32-year-old striker who's going for a good spell. That isn't the case. We would have loved to have kept him and we tried everything we can to keep him. But what Ross was left with, with the decision of, does he want one of his senior players, you know, probably second most senior player at the parks, um, unhappy and basically not wanting to play for Aldershot. Um, he's got an opportunity of joining a club that's 15, 20 minutes away from him. He's got a young family with uh, a wife who works in, in London. Uh, he drops his kids off at school and then has two hour journey and he's also 32 years of age where he's got to look seriously at what's best for any and I don't want to throw any under a bus I want to tell the truth and I want to be honest we didn't want to lose him he made it perfectly clear that this was a crucial time he's also starting his own business up everything about the move to Dagenham suited him everything about the move to Dagenham was good for him and his family and that's what Innes made his decision on what's best for his, his wife and family and I fully respect that. It isn't something anyone here wanted to do uh, but you've got to be pragmatic in football and if a player wants to move and you're left with a, an unhappy player, especially a senior player that's unhappy in the dressing room, then uh, we didn't want to go down that route. Okay, just to, I think you've kind of touched on it, but my next question would have been like, and he was contracted to us for the rest of this season and next year. Um, could we have played hard? Could we have kept him? I mean, arguably, he's contracted to us. It would have been a risk, um, and this is the discussion that Ross and I and his management team, the rest of the boys, have had. So we've been looking for the last couple of weeks, is there a ready-made replacement? Well, a ready-made target man there isn't. Um, we, we have made inquiries about um, two or three other, other forwards and we'd hope to, to bring you some good news in the future on that. It won't be immediate. The timing couldn't be much worse. Um, we've got the trophy game coming up and um, we are making sure that all our focus is on, and Ross will be doing that today, all our focus is on trying to beat Dorking on, on Saturday. 
and I feel we have a, a good enough squad and more importantly, Ross feels he has a good enough squad uh, to progress in the trophy. Just to try and pin you down a bit there though, Terry, um, you said the timing wasn't right, but couldn't we have kept him and made it right, made the timing right for us? Because in effect, you, a fan like me would suggest that we, we had the aces. Yeah, we were left in a position where I think, uh, obviously Dagenham were pushing us, and we could say, well, so what, Dagenham were pushing us. Uh, the player has an opportunity to join his local club. They've got two or three other candidates they would like to come in for, or they would have come in for, if any wasn't their top priority. So, you know, I've got, or we've got in his saying, look, that's going to be gone, and that's an opportunity at 32 years of age to join his local club and uh, it, you know it is a very difficult decision because my job and, and Ross's job and everybody's job is to do what's best for the club and what the timing couldn't be much worse uh, thankfully we've had no midweek game so we've been able to work we had already and like I say this has been the pipeline for a couple of weeks uh, we have already um, strengthen the squad with getting Morgan in from Swindon so that gives us another forward in there. Uh, we are actively looking for a replacement for um, Inni and I'm not too sure until when you ask that question you're quite right to ask it, every fan that asks it, when is the right time to put your leading goal scorer and yes we'd have maybe got over the trophy game and that would have been important, although I still think we do run this alley. Um, we're not safe yet. So you could say, well, until you are safe, why would you do it? Well, we would have had a very, very unhappy player. And I don't want to drop in the under the bus, but the main reason we've done that is because we've had an unhappy player in the dressing room and our dressing room is vibrant and to be honest, we want players that want to play for all the show. Okay, I think I think you've answered it then. I wasn't trying to get you to throw him under the bus, but obviously I'm going to yeah. make my interpretation yeah. of that yeah. as, and you don't have to answer this, but my interpretation of that is the, the player perhaps didn't want to play for us anymore. Okay. He wanted to play for Dagenham. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next thing is, I've, I've got down replacements, which we'll touch on in a minute, but... The next question is, um, is contracted to us, so did we get a fee? And are you allowed to say what that fee is? Because if I was a fan, I might want to know. And all the things about the fee, are you getting the fee? Yeah. Is the fee going to uh, the board? Because I'm sure people think it's going in their pockets yeah. or uh, repayment. So what's happening? What is it? What is it? What's happening with it? And um, did we get money for him? Mark, I think that's uh, a question that any proper shops fan would ask. Um, it's not a money, it's not built around the money. So we've had no pressure from Dean Shahid or any other board member to sell him. In fact, it's been quite a reverse. Can we hang on to him? Can we hang on to him? Because they both realise that how valuable he's been, you know, up to this point. Um, it's not even a case of, wow, the money is fantastic and we can go and spend loads of money getting replacements because that isn't the case. Um, no, I'm not in a position where I can declare the fee, both Dagenham and ourselves. It's not to the benefit of anybody, really. We've got to go out, I've got to go out and get some replacements. And uh, uh, the first thing they're going to say is, oh, well, you've got some money in for any. Um, it's not as much as we would have liked. We had two clubs in the running. And at one stage you think, okay, we can pump that up a bit because there's two, two clubs in the running. One club dropped out. We were left with um, the one club. And like I say, it's not been made on financial grounds and we will be able to use uh, the, all of the money that we get in for any on building for the future. And it is very much building for the future. We've got... Um, probably about half of our squad 
already tied in for next year. We hope to have um, we hope to tie down one or two senior players in our squad for um, for future years, and hopefully we can have some news on that later on. Where we are with looking at people coming in, they're short term, they long term, so we. We have already identified a young player we'd love to bring in, and he will be brilliant for all the shots, as long as we can hold on to him. And that is ironic during this interview. Um, and we may well look at supplementing a, another forward for the trophy. Will that before this Saturday be before this Saturday? Very difficult to, to make that happen, but um, we are aware and we are conscious this club has an opportunity to uh, get to Wembley and uh, if we can get someone in sooner rather than later, even before Saturday, we would do that. Okay, just touching on replacements, you've obviously suggested there in the interview that you've got uh, one or two maybe more lined up. We, we do, um, you, we're allowed to play five loanies in the squad or have five loanies in the squad. Yeah. Uh, we're obviously on that limit now, so what yeah. are you looking at? I don't know if you can tell, but again, fans might want to know, are you looking at replacing some loanies, maybe one or two of them going back home and then bringing more in? Or are you looking at bringing players in that would be contracted to the club? Both, we have really both. The answer would be both. Yes, we look at the loans we have. If, if those boys are not getting enough game time and uh, we could bring um, a lonely that would get more game time, especially relevant to the FA Trophy. Uh, we, we're looking at that and we're also looking at um, players that uh, didn't go during the transfer window in the EFL and possibility of, of getting them in on a permanent basis, whether that's to the end of the year or a longer term for this year and next, would be, will be dependent upon their age and the positions they play in because we're trying to build for, for next year and uh, we've already we're already done quite well on that with uh, like I say hopefully locking some more senior players in later. Okay I mean there's been a positive slant in recent weeks we've had some great away form and we've even transferred that a bit at home. We've got a draw at home. We've won one, drawn one and lost one, which in recent times is fantastic compared to what the whole normal home record's been. And there's been a bit of a buzz about the place. The league table looks healthy. Um, this is gonna come as a bit of a blow to the fans. Yeah. You, can't, you, can't, you can't sort of deny that. Um, so, you know, you could understand why the fans are gonna be left sort of scratching the heads yeah. a little bit. I know you've answered the questions as best you can, but I'm just kind of thinking, um, are you confident that what you and Ross have got lined up can, you know, can replace or do better than what, than what we've... Than yeah, what it's, it's our job to, to, to get better players in, and I think Ross has uh, done really well since he's yeah, come exciting. with, with the recruitment. Uh, we are still aware, we're not safe in the league. We're not... Blase saying, no, we only need 15 points, you've got 15 games or whatever. We're going to look at our next four games. You know, they're, they're like, even with an in the end, you certainly weren't guaranteed you're going to beat Wrexham, Chesterfield, Dagenham, and uh, 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 Barnet, yeah, away. So, yes, we realise we're still going to be scrapping and fighting for every point. And uh, we do feel that Ross is now about to stamp his identity on the playing structure of the club. And uh, we know that has to be linked into uh, our main priority. Our main priority is to stay in this league, followed by to do as well as we can in the FA Trophy and to get to Wembley. That is, a, that is our aim with a bit of luck. We can, we can do both of those and that's what our aims and our targets are. So in a nutshell, because this interview has been mainly about you know, uh, we've evolved that a little bit, but in a nutshell, um, a situation came about, which, well, you can tell me if you agree with this statement from what I've made of it, and the, you guys at home can make your own opinions. It's not me trying to put words in it, but from what I've heard is 
a situation came about that was almost then the, the staff's hands were forced a little bit because of the player situation and um, that you're left now to deal with that and obviously go forward with that. And I've got a little bit more confidence that you and Ross know exactly what you want going forward. Will it leave us, well, I guess my last question is, would you agree with the statement I've just said? And also, um, you know, how, how do you feel about talking now? Like, do you feel we're gonna have enough strength to, to take on talking Saturday? Very close game we had with them uh, last Saturday. Um, I think they could have equalised. That may well have been a different game had they done that. Um, I thought we played very well last Saturday, and I think that, um, funnily enough, uh, and he didn't score last Saturday. Um, and I think we've got enough, I definitely know we've got enough in our dressing room to rise up and, and give us that little bit extra, whoever plays in, in this position, will, uh, I'm sure do us proud. Brilliant, I think that's, I think you've answered all the questions. Um, I think the best thing we can all do now is have a chat about it for a day or two and then uh, draw a line under it and move on, you agree? Exactly that. Brilliant, sorry, thanks for coming. And uh, just explaining that. Click here for the latest match highlights and click here to subscribe. Are you in with a shot? Look below for more information.